Alrighty. Hi, folks. Thanks so much for joining us today um, for our course information session on the Psychological Sciences programs at the Ken Mill Institute. Um, very happy to get started um, and to thank Chris Kilby, Dr. Chris Kilby, our course coordinator, for his um, time and insights today. Uh, we'll be going through a bit of information around the two different courses within the Psychological Science um, program, um, as well as addressing some questions that did come through as folks registered and indicated interest for this course today. I did just want to start with providing an acknowledgement of country. Um, and again, Can Miller is founded on the unceded lands of the Wurundjeri peoples of the Kulin Nation. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and acknowledge their deep, enduring connection to land, waters, and community. We acknowledge the richness and value of their accumulated cultural knowledge spanning vast expanses of time and extend this respect to all Indigenous peoples of this continent and all adjacent lands, as well as to any First Nations people who may come across the material today. My name is Meng, I'm the Academic Registrar and Student Services here at Ken Miller, um, and I'm happy to pass it off to Chris to um, get us started on today's presentation. Fantastic, thank you, Meng. Hi, everyone, my name is Chris. Um, I'm the course coordinator here for the Graduate Diploma and Graduate Certificate of Psychological Science, but I'm also the Associate Dean for Learning and Teaching here at Cam Miller as well, so it's part of my duty to look after the way that we do our teaching uh, here at Cam Miller. Outside of that, I'm also a researcher. I do research in stress. Um, currently, I'm looking at youth residential workers and the uh, ways that we can help them to do the work that they do through the stress that comes with caring in the youth residential space. I'm also the uh, past president for the Australasian Society of Behavioral Health and Medicine, and currently I sit as the chair of education training for the International Society of Behavioral Medicine. So very much connected to the health psychology behavioral medicine landscape, um, both in Australia, but, but around the globe. Today we're talking about the Graduate Diploma and Graduate Certificate, but before I jump into the specifics of those courses, I wanted to begin by talking a little bit about uh, who Ken Miller is, because it's, it's often not a, a household name. So Ken Miller is one of the pioneering um, organisations within psychology and counselling in Australia. So we were started back in 1961, and we've been a key player in a number of government initiatives. Um, in this space, and we've also been a key player in starting and um, advocating for a number of the therapies that are used today within the Australian landscape as well. Studying here at Can Miller uh, means that there are a number of flexible options, particularly in the context of an online program like the Graduate Diploma of Psych Science, uh, particularly in the context of you can really tailor the number of units that you study per semester. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about the flexibility as we go on today. In the graduate diploma, oh, sorry, we can go back. Um, in the graduate diploma, it is quite true that you learn from experts and practitioners uh, throughout the program. So I myself am not a practitioner. I'm not a registered psychologist. I'm a researcher by training, uh, and I specialize in psychology. And so I teach into units around research methods and statistics. Um, and I give a few lectures on areas of expertise for me, such as stress and trauma. But we also have practitioners that teach into the course as well. So one of our units, we get practitioners in organizational psychology, forensic psychology, and more to talk about their experience as a practitioner. And our units that are more applied based, such as psychopathology, is taught by people who are practicing in that space as well. So you get a combination of researchers and practitioners um, who are delivering your material. We've got up here that we are above national average ratings for um, a range of different scores, but I want to talk about student experience. There's government surveys around this, and we often rank 90% and higher across the span of student experience for the graduate diploma. I think I might leave the other ones. The only other thing there I think that's worth flagging that a lot of people don't know about Can Miller is that we're also a not-for-profit and we're also a charity, a registered charity. Um, so we give back to the community. Um, we're not here to make money. We're here to make strong therapists and to give back to, to a community that's in need. All right, we might move on to the next slide if that's okay. So... The Graduate Diploma of Psychological Science is part of the psychology training pathway. 
One of the questions we often get asked a lot is what is the difference between psychology and counselling? And sometimes we get students that start psychology realising that they wanted to do counselling or vice versa. They started counselling and then realised they're actually after psychology. So the core difference between the two is that psychology is a science-based practice. We train what we call scienti uh, scientist practitioners. So what that means is that even when it comes to diagnosis, to treatment, um, there's a very strong scientific approach to that. Uh, that means that there is measurement, there is statistics, there is even research that goes on as part of treatment. And it's very much informed by what the research says is the most effective ways of working with a particular condition that's presented in front of you. Because psychology is a science-based practice, that also means that there is another arm to psychology other than just practitioners, and that's the researchers that do the research. So I'm in that research arm. And so you get training in both of these perspectives. You get both that sort of how to be a researcher and how to do good research, as well as how do you then use that research in the clinic. Counselling, on the other hand, takes a reflective-based and person-centred approach to therapy that's much more driven by the individual, and it's much more organic uh, to the training in psychology that's a bit more rigid. So both approaches are very effective, and both approaches are perfectly acceptable. There's not the case that one is better than the other, it's two different ways of approaching the same thing. And often what I've seen and what I've heard is that psychology might work for some clients and counselling might work for others. And it's not necessarily, again, that one's better than the other. It's just about the fit. Uh, and the same goes for practitioners. Some people feel more comfortable in psychology. Some feel more comfortable in counselling. So that's the main difference. One's backed by science and one isn't. In terms of study pathways to become a psychologist, it's quite lengthy. Um, so it starts with an undergraduate degree, uh, and that might be a bachelor's in psychology. It might be, and you might have done that with us, our psychology and counseling program, or you might have done a bachelor's of psychology elsewhere. You might have also done a completely different degree as well. Once you've completed your undergraduate, you then need to move on to doing honors. Now, if I just draw your attention, and Mung, I know you've got the screen, I don't know if you can bring up the laser pointer for me, and just bring it down to the external undergraduates in other disciplines, that bottom left box for me. I might be asking. <laughs> All right, we can work through this. Um, I can see the mouse, the mouse is doing a good job. So for the graduate diploma, everyone would have an undergraduate de uh, degree in the discipline outside of psychology. To enter the psychology field, you would either have to do a full three-year bachelor's or do a bridging course. A Camilla, the bridging course is called the Graduate Diploma of Psychological Science. Effectively, it's a one-year program. So we have two semesters over eight units, and we cover three years of psychology training in one year. It's a very condensed program. And it gets you up to speed on everything that you would have learned in a bachelor's. The reason why we can do a bridging program is that we make some assumptions about what you've learned in an undergraduate, in a generic undergraduate degree. We do go over the basics again uh, throughout the course, but we, we assume that we don't need to go through a lot of what you've already done. We assume that you've done absolutely no psychology. We assume you don't even know what the word means. I'm sure you do, but we make no assumptions about the field of psychology itself. We provide all that training on the ground. Once you've done the graduate diploma, then you can go on to do your bachelor's of psychology honors. From there, you have to do a master's degree. There are lots of different pathways for the master's degree, as you can see. And then after that, you have to go through a register app program. So the actual training at a minimum is six years. Um, it can go for longer than that as well, depending on the pathway that you go for. I can just go back, sorry, for one more moment. I've spoken about the graduate diploma and how that fits into the grand scheme of things. So we've spoken about the fact that if you have an undergraduate in another discipline, the fastest way to get into honors is to do a graduate diploma of psychological science first, then go into your honors year. If you've already done a bachelor's of psychology, but you didn't make it into honors, and this is sometimes the case for some people, 
You can do our graduate certificate of psychological science, which is half of our graduate diploma. And as long as you meet certain grade hurdles that I think I'm going to talk about later tonight, um, you can get entry into our honours program here at Cairn Miller. So it's an alternative entry into honours that we offer. And it's a bit of an acknowledgement that sometimes we might have done an undergraduate five, six, maybe 10 years ago, and life was different back then, and we're ready to study now. And so it gives you another chance to go for honours if perhaps you haven't, uh, you didn't have the chance before. All right, let's continue on. So why study with us for the graduate diploma? I mentioned before that there's flexible study options, and that's where some of this is going to come in. In the graduate diploma, we use what's called a flipped classroom model. What that means is that your lectures are given to you ahead of time, and you can do them whenever you like. They're pre-recorded. Um, so you can watch them whenever you like, 24 hours a day, at a time that works for you. But you watch it before you attend a synchronous tutorial. And by synchronous, I mean it's live. You're in a classroom like this on Zoom with the other students in that unit, and you use the material that you learned in the lectures. So they're hands-on, they're applied. We've been quite creative to come up with hands-on activities in an online space. Um, but that's certainly not a participatory sport. Um, studying the graduate diploma is very much something where we expect you to get involved and get your hands dirty uh, every week. So a lot of flexibility with your lectures and when you do them and how you engage with them. And then we expect you to turn up to a tutorial that's at a set time and work with other students. We also think it's really important that you are there with the tutorials and other students to foster that sense of community. We find that in an online course, it's easy to become isolated. So we've tried to build in as many things as possible throughout the course to make you feel connected to the other students. You can study full-time, which is four units a semester across two semesters, but you can also study part-time. And here at K. Miller, part-time just means anything less than four units a semester. So you might be studying three units, two units. We have some students that even do one unit a semester. Uh, because that's what fits their life at this point in time. We've also been quite creative with our assessments in the graduate diploma. We're very aware that we've got one year to get you ready for honours, and honours is a big ask of a student. It requires you to do your own piece of research. Uh, you have to come up with the research design, the research question, you have to collect the data, you have to analyse it. It's a big piece. So our assessments are strategically designed to spend this whole year getting you ready to be able to do that, to be able to, by the end of the graduate diploma, have a very well thought out research project um, that you would have received feedback on throughout different units. So we've been very, very careful in how we've designed those assessments for that purpose. We want you to be honors ready. And the other two points um, about why us, and maybe these should have been the first two, but um, at least as of last month when we were looking, uh, we are Australia's only true eight-unit, two-semester um, APAC-accredited psychology bridging course. So 24 weeks uh, across eight units. There are a few other um, providers that offer that same structure of, of eight units over two semesters, but they require you to have done foundational psychology before you can apply. We don't make that assumption. We've built that into our units for you so that we've condensed it to just those eight units. Um, we were also Australia's most affordable course as well. Okay, our selection process. So you apply directly to Cam Miller through our website. Uh, there is no WAM requirement for either of our courses. So for the graduate certificate, you simply need to have a bachelor's in psychology already. And for the graduate diploma, you simply need to have a bachelor's in anything. You just need to have completed the degree. There's no admissions interviews. We just need your recent academic transcripts and proof of identity and citizenship. Um, and part of that is reporting requirements for what it means to study in higher ed, but also being an online course, we need domestic fee paying students. We can't take international students into this course. But I think this is the point, Mung, that I need to hand things over to you. Uh no, I have another slide. Fantastic. I will keep going. Tell me when to stop talking. Um, so the course structure. 
as I mentioned before, we have eight units over two semesters. So for 2025, for next year, uh, in semester one, we have PSY 401 through to PSY 404. PSY 401 is our theories of personality unit. It's about what makes you you, but also what makes you different to the person next to you? What makes you an individual? The unit is taken by Sasha Davies. She's a researcher with a lot of experience in personality. PSY 402 is research design and statistics. This is my unit. It's the one that people get scared about because of its name. It has statistics in it. Nobody likes statistics. But we take all the maths out. It's much more applied and it's much more authentic. It, and by authentic, I mean I teach the material and I teach the approach to statistics in the same way that we do it in the field. In the same way that if I was asked to join a research project as the statistician, what are the things that I would see and how would I work through them? That's the way that we structure it. Um, and students find that it's much easier to work through the material that way um, than having to try and calculate things by hand. We have fancy software that does the calculations for us. PSY 403 is social psychology. This is all about, whereas personality is what makes me me and what makes me not the person next to me, why am I different? Social psychology is about what happens when I get together with that person next to me. It's about group dynamics. Uh, this is where we learn about things like organizations and how they work together, how communities work together. Um, but we also learn about prejudice and discrimination. Uh, we look at systemic racism and things that are a bit bigger um, than just me and the person next to me. Developmental psychology is all about uh, psychology across the lifespan. We look at um, pregnancy, we look at childbirth, early years of life, but then we continue through to aging and dying as well, as well as maturity. And it asks really big questions like, can personality change across the lifespan? Or what are the social dynamics of a child with their mother and father versus a complete stranger? Why are they different? So ask some really big but interesting questions. I should have mentioned social psychology is taken um, by Janine McGuinness. Um, Janine has a long history in social psychology in Australia and at what point chaired the Social Psychology Research Society for Australia. Developmental psychology is taken by Sasha Davies, who um, also takes theories of personality. Um, Sasha's actual area of expertise is personality and development together. She does a lot of work with mothers and children. Whereas semester one is all about some very foundational things like personality, social development, statistics, it's all about how do things work. Semester two begins to look at how do things work not so well. Uh, we start to look at a few more mechanisms and a few more problems that are, can occur within an individual. So PSY 405 looks at behavior, cognition, neuroscience. It's much more beginning to look at the brain and trying to understand why people act the way that they do. Um, it's quite a big complex unit, but it's the foundational skills and knowledge that underlies, um, I'm sure many of you have heard of CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. Uh, this unit is the underlying theories and principles that um, lead to that therapy. You don't learn the therapy in the unit, we simply go through um, a range of theories and principles. In PSY 4, oh, sorry, before I go on, PSY 405 is taken by, um, uh, by David. David is uh, a very well-known researcher within the cognition and neuroscience space. Um, he spent quite a, a long time over in Japan doing um, collaborative research with the universities over there in cognition and neuroscience. PSY 406 is uh, psychopathology. This unit we look at how do we, uh, what are the different diagnoses that we have for um, different mental health conditions so we go through emotion-based disorders. Oh, I think we've changed the page. Um, there we go. There are different uh, disorders such as emotional disorders like anxiety and depression, but we go through uh, trauma and adjustment disorders. We've lost the page again. 
Sorry, Chris. Sorry. Um, we go through adjustment disorders. We go through um, schizophrenia. We go through neurodivergence. So we look at things like autism and ADHD. But we also look at how do we make these diagnoses. We look at differences in opinion around the diagnoses. For example, um, the DSM has a certain set of criteria, but then there's another um, manual for diagnosing conditions called the ICD. Um, and we look at why are they different. In PSY, uh, PSY 406 is taken by Min Lee. Uh, Min is a registered education and, and developmental psychologist. Um, but also works in the clinical space as well. PSY 407, Psychology in Practice. This unit is taken by Janine McGuinness, uh, but it's completely guest lectured. This unit is all about exposing you to different professions within psychology. So in this unit, you will be lectured by health psychologists, by education and developmental psychologists, uh, we have health psychologists that come in, forensic psychologists. We have an org psych that comes in. I think we have a clinical psychologist as well. And the unit is about giving you a bit of a peek behind the iron curtain into these different professions and just helping to broaden the perspective that clinical psychology is not all there is in psychology. There are many, many other fields um, that you can go into. Finally, Sasha Davies takes our PSY 408 research capstone. Whereas 402 is all about statistics, 408 is about research methods. How do you actually conduct the research? What is ethical research? Um, how do you pick measures for a study? 408 is also guest lectured. We get experts in the areas of each week's topic to come and talk about them. So we get someone from ethics to talk about ethics. We get um, the Associate Dean of Research to talk about um, methodology concerns and measurement selection. So we get different people with expertise to talk about different aspects of research. All right, I think I'm ready to move on to the next slide. Thanks. So if you do decide to come study with us, what does a full-time week look like? Well, each unit has a one and a half hour asynchronous lecture and a one and a half hour synchronous tutorial that's on Zoom per week. So what this means is that you have three hours per week per unit um, of study time. So that means six hours of lectures and six hours of tutorials per week if you're full time. Each unit also on average requires about six hours of personal study and assessment time per week. So a full-time student doing four units per semester, that's 24 hours a week of personal study and assessment time. So all up, that's 36 hours of work. So what we try to tell students is full-time study is the equivalent of full-time work. And these uh, numbers of hours per week, this is on average. So what that means is that some weeks, some units might require less, some units might require more you might find that there are some periods in the semester that are really quiet and some periods of the semester that you're going over those 36 hours um, because everything has assessments due. So this is a ballpark figure, but the times move around from week to week. So if you are working, I do recommend considering if you're working full time, only taking one unit. And if you're working part time, adjusting your, the number of units that you're taking so that you're not expecting yourself to work more than a full-time uh, amount of work. So life after the graduate diploma or graduate certificate. Regardless of which way you go, um, the next step after this particular course is um, an honours year, an APAC accredited honours year. Now, in the graduate diploma and the graduate certificate, um, here at Cam Miller at least, we have guaranteed entry into honours. If your overall WAM for your degree, be it the diploma or the certificate, um, is above 70, and you get at least 65 in either 402 statistics or 408, uh, the research capstone. So if you meet those grade hurdles, we will give you a spot guaranteed in honours. If you don't make that, then you are more than welcome to still try to get into honours through the normal competitive pathway. Um, but if you get above those grade hurdles, you can bypass that and know you've got a guaranteed spot here at Cairn Miller. 
if you choose that psychology is just not for you, you don't want to study anymore, that's perfectly fine. Um, the graduate diploma and certificate won't necessarily open up new career doors for you. This is very much a bridging pathway into honours, but it does make you more competitive for pretty much every job that you currently do have available for you, such as if you're working in health and community settings, human resources, um, product design, marketing, these are all places that value it. The one career opportunity that might open up, and it's up here, it's research. Um, we've had students that have come out of the graduate diploma, and even though we wouldn't expect it, they have actually landed positions in research um, assistant work at um, a number of different organizations throughout Australia. So we do know that that's one of the, the career pathways out of this, this degree is uh, into research. All right, can we move on to the next slide, please? All right, did you Thanks, want Chris. to slide now? Yeah, absolutely. I'll give you a bit of a break. Thank you so Thank much you. For, uh, for all that information. I will say, um, I know that's been a lot of information thrown um, at folks today. So if you do have questions, feel free to pop them into the Q&A. I know there are a few questions that I met, as I mentioned earlier, that were submitted through in um, in advance of this as well. So we'll get to them at the end of the slides, but feel free if you still have some questions to pop them into the chat in the meantime. Um, I'll move on to discuss a little bit about the student support that's available at Ken Miller Broadly. So um, outside of all of the specific course information that Chris has just shared, we do have a number of other supports and resources that are available to students outside of the classroom that I wanted to touch base on. So I know a number of you here today are international students or, or maybe studying um, um, from overseas and looking to come to Australia. And we do have some really dedicated supports for those international students in acknowledgement of the fact that their experiences and the transition um, can be quite unique. So whether that's tailored social activities, uh, workshops or other study advice that's really targeted to your specific needs um, is something that we're really dedicated to here at Camilla. We also do offer a number of different academic supports. So across all of our courses, there are opportunities to get one-on-one -on -one learning support um, with academic skill sessions, workshops and other study strategies and tips often run throughout the, the school year. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to acknowledge learning equity and the, the flexible modifications that we do offer to students as well, particularly um, acknowledging the fact that studying mental health, whether that's counselling, psychology or otherwise, can also be quite um, a challenging thing. So we do have sometimes students who require some special circumstances or special modifications, as well as students who might uh, experience either temporary or ongoing accessibility needs. So there are a number of different flexible study modifications um, and adjustments that we can offer to those students just to make sure that those, um, that doesn't result in any kind of barriers um, to your study success. Uh, again, so we do have our um, updated fees for 2025 now published on our website across all of our courses. So you can find that information on all of the individual course pages on the website. But for those interested in the psychological science programs, um, again, those have been updated on the slides here. There are also a number of different ways to pay for your tuition fees. So obviously with this, um, with the two programs being um, specifically targeted at domestic students, um, for those who are eligible, you can pay for your tu tuition fees through your fee help loans. Um, there are also a number of different external study loans or scholarships that are offered either through the government or through other various bodies that you might want to research into or, or look into to see if there are other subsidies available. Otherwise, students do always have the option to make payments upfront and direct to Can Miller itself. We do offer a number of internal scholarships and subsidies for some of our other courses. And again, those are also published on our website. So if that's something that you might be interested in, I definitely encourage you to take a look to see what's available. Um, so again, I know that was a lot of information, a few kind of key takeaways, um, and we'll get to some questions shortly, but um, do note that applications are already open and will remain open until the end of January with ongoing and early offers already being made. Um, so we do encourage you, if you're considering it, to get in early so that you can maximise your consideration. As I mentioned previously, fee help is available to eligible domestic students and has, and as, sorry, and as Chris has um, discussed earlier, we do really offer some flexible online, on-campus and part-time and full-time arrangements. Um, so if that's something that you might be interested in, again, definitely reach out and we can talk through some of your options with you. 
Lastly, just to recap, this very much is the pathway to our pro registration after further study. Um, so really making sure that you can get your foot in the door is, is what we aim to do through, um, through the programs that we're offering and discussing today. Um, so we've gotten to the end of our formal slides and can open it up to some questions. So again, if you do have any, feel free to pop them um, in the Q&A chat on the session um, on the webinar here. In the meantime, as we field some of those that are coming through live, I did have a few that came through in advance of today that I wanted to share with Chris to get his insight. Um, oh. So the first is, what would you um, recommend in terms of the difference between the grad cert and um, the grad dip of psychological science? And how would you advise candidates to kind of make that decision around which is the best fit for them? Mm. So the major difference between the graduate certificate and the graduate diploma is whether or not you've already studied um, a bachelor's of psychology. So if you studied a bachelor of psychology already, but you didn't quite make it into honours, then you want to take the graduate certificate as an alternative entry into our honours degree. That's the way that we do it. If you've studied a bachelor's in anything else, uh, it might be marketing, it might be arts, it could be anything, and maybe even higher. We've had people that have studied PhDs, we've had lawyers, we've had police officers. Um, if you study any other profession and you want to enter psychology, uh, then you want to do the graduate diploma. That's the um, APAC accredited um, bridging pathway into honours. Uh, and it saves you having to do that bachelor's. That's three years. The graduate diploma is just one year. Thanks, Chris. Another question that's come through. Um, you mentioned, uh, or you described, sorry, earlier, the difference between psychology and counselling. There have been a few questions around how, again, how to kind of make that decision of what is the best fit and also where psychological science fits if someone then chose to go back into the counselling stream after the fact. Yeah. So the training pathways, if I start with that second part about what happens if you go psychology and then jump to counselling, the training pathways are very, very different. The things that we do for training in psychology are very different to how we train our counsellors because there's different approaches to them. So it's not very common that studying psychology will, for example, get you recognised prior learning in a counselling program because they're quite distinct. Um, in terms of going to the first part of that question, though, how do you make that decision? Uh, do you want to do counselling? Do you want to do psychology? I think it's it's not a, there's not a straightforward answer. There's not a formula I could give. I think it's quite a personal decision about what it is that you want to do as a profession. Um, counselling is a much shorter degree. Uh, for counselling, you go and do a master's. Uh, they sh masters is usually about two years long, and they they do expect that you've had a considerable amount of life experience before you do that masters program, but it's just that two years. Uh, whereas psychology, it's a much longer um, gauntlet of training uh, that you go through. So I mean, even become a researcher, I spent ten years full time studying to start research, um, and I think it's six to eight years if you want to be a clinician. So there's quite, quite a longer training pathway and there's a bigger focus on research and bigger focus on methodology and statistics. So if you decide psychology is for you, that's something that's going to stay with you for the next six to eight years. It's not something that's going to disappear. So if that idea of working within a scientific model excites you, if that's something that you want to live and breathe, psychology is the place for it. But counselling is an alternative that doesn't have that. Um, it's a very different way of practising. And, and for some people, that's the preferred way. Um, something that some students have done, sorry, this is a long-winded question, but it's hard to give a straight answer to this. Um, I've had students that will start the graduate diploma. Um, we, you can pull out of the graduate diploma, you can withdraw up to census date. So we get some students that start and get a bit of a taste of bit of a feel for what psychology is. And I've had students that come up to me after, you know, three weeks, four weeks and go, I'm glad I've tried this, but this really isn't what I wanted. This is, you know, counseling is actually where I wanted to be. Um, and then I'll move on to counseling. 
And if you withdraw before census date, there's no financial penalties, there's no academic penalties, there's nothing wrong with that. So you can try it out and see. And people do the same with counselling. They'll give the first couple of weeks a go and then make an informed decision about, is this actually what I want? Um, and that's probably, it, it takes time, obviously. That's not a quick solution, but that's the most informed way of making that decision, I think. Thanks, Chris. Hopefully this will be a, a more straightforward question, but it is related to, to your previous answer. There has been... Um, some curiosity or, or potentially some nerves around how much uh, maths and statistics the course um, or both courses involve, um, whether or not you can speak to that at all. Definitely. In terms of maths, I think in my statistics unit, there are two weeks that have maths in them. Um, and I think I do the math in front of you. I, I think I don't really get you to do too much yourself. And if you can add, subtract, multiply, divide, you know more stats, uh, more maths than you need for the unit. Um, the reason why we don't take a mathematical approach, which is actually quite different. A lot of universities teach you how to do the analyses from first principles by hand. Like when I was trained, my stats exam was literally, here's a printout of an Excel spreadsheet. Now calculate the analysis by hand in the under exam conditions. Um, in reality, there is not a single person who does statistics that does anything by hand. That do, it just doesn't happen in the field. Um, and in the confines of one year, there's no point in us trying to teach you on something that's redundant. So in the statistics unit, we really focus on the philosophy and the theory behind why we're doing what we're doing. And we teach you how to do it in the statistical programs, how to interpret the output, how to report it but you don't need to understand the mathematics behind where those numbers come from. You'll understand theoretically what they represent, and that's a much more useful piece of knowledge. In terms of how broad that is across the program, across the graduate diploma, um, research and statistics will be in every unit, not because you're expected to calculate stuff or anything like that, um, but the basis of evidence for psychological science is peer-reviewed journal articles. And peer-reviewed journal articles are scientific reports where, um, you know, half the paper is research methodology and the statistical results. And you're going to be expected to be able to, and we'll teach you how, to find the journal articles, to read them, to process them, to make sense of them, and then to apply those to your assessments and to your coursework. So it's quite pervasive um, how far-reaching research methods and stats is. And it's not confined to us. That will be the case for when you get to honours. It'll be the case in masters that research is just through everything that you do. Um, it is the basis of the scientific practitioner model that you would be learning in psychology. Thanks, Chris. And then uh, another one, speaking of theory, <laughs> um, a few questions around the fact that obviously the two programs are intended to be bridging courses or sequences. Um, what opportunities would students have to then still apply some of that theory to, to like a real life um, either scenario or to gain that real life experience? Mm. So we try to make it as applied as possible the whole way through. Um, so for example, in developmental psychology, one of their assessments is a weekly discussion board post where you're actually asked to apply the material that you've learned to a current real life thing that's going on. Um, so we try to make them as real life as possible. This isn't a course where you're going to learn therapy models. You're not going to be able to come out of this and go out and treat someone with anxiety. Um, and in fact, that's not how, um, we're not allowed to do that even if we wanted to. Um, psychology is a highly regulated field um, and the training pathways are dictated by um, government agencies. So we're not allowed to actually teach you how to treat anxiety until you get to a master's program. Uh, so this is very much about the foundational theories of psychology. Um, so that when you do get into master's, you have that strong core understanding of science that the therapies are based upon. So a little bit of theoretical stuff where you could possibly apply it in terms of understanding the world around you, um, but it's not something that you're necessarily going to be able to go out and practice. 
Thank you. So we've come to the end of the questions that have been submitted <laughs> so far. Um, obviously, we have a few more moments. So if there's anything that we haven't been able to address from, um, from any of you here today, um, again, please feel free to pop your questions in the chat. If not, I might just pose one final question to you, Chris, which I've been doing for all of the course in first session so far, um, which is just, um, I'm curious for you, what has been your, um, I guess, favorite part or, or what do you feel is the most notable part about being a member um, of the Camilla community, both as a, a teaching staff, but also just as a, as a regular human? <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, the biggest thing about being a staff member here, but also when I think about the graduate diploma, is the sense of community that we have and the connection to each other that we have. Um, I was actually very much in a fortunate position. Um, it was my role to actually build the graduate diploma from scratch. And one of the big goals that I wanted was to simulate that sense of community that I had come to love at Cam Miller in an online environment. And we learned a lot in our first year about how we could do that better. We weren't doing it bad, but we could definitely have done it better. And we did. And it's quite common now in our unit evaluations and when students talk about the end of the semester, um, that they do talk about that community and the fact that they feel like they are connected with the other students. Um, everyone knows everyone by name, even though you might be living in a completely different state. We've had, I've had students contact me afterwards going that they ended up at a university in honours with another Cam Miller student that they were alongside with in class and now they're in person with them. So for me, that's the biggest highlight, other than the fact that you know, I'm biased when I say we have a fantastic program, but just that connection between everyone, I think, is it's really rare, I think, in an online program to see that. Thanks so much, Chris. And um, to the rest of you, thank you so much for your interest and your, um, your attendance today. Um, again, if there are any questions that we haven't got to or if something comes to mind later down the track, you're always welcome to reach out to us. Um, send through an email. You can also book an individual um, admissions consultation if you'd appreciate the chance to talk with one of our applications team a little bit more about your specific circumstances and study interest, um, which you can do on our website. So definitely encouraging you to reach out if you do have any questions and hopefully we do see your application coming through soon. Um, but for now, I just want to thank Dr. Chris Kilby again for your time and your insight um, and to all of you for, for indicating your interest. Um, like I said, we hope to see you um, or see your application come through soon. But for now, uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, and thanks again, folks.